Well, thanks for joining us in the Dainty Acres training studio. We're working on our free stack. This is my baby, Bernie. She's almost a year old and she's already had one show where she did great. And we're just working on refining that free stack. So what I'll do is just pretend like I'm at a dog show, stand there like I'm getting ready to go into the ring. And then I will take her into the ring and then walk her backwards into a free stack. I'm not too worried about exact placement of feet. Really what I want is I want her just to get to know what I'm asking her to do. So I'm bent over, which means she still needs to fix. And as soon as I stand up, that means stay. And I drop my hand as a stop sign and remind her uh, with my hand sign what uh, she's supposed to be doing. Oh, nice. I'm working on me as well. Well, mostly it is me because she's always going to do what I ask unless she finally gets frustrated with me and gives up, which I don't want. So I want to keep my eyes up and my signs clear. So if I keep my eyes up and I'm gazing at a focal point, I can keep my line straight. So I'm always looking at my ring, looking for focal points that I can keep my eye on so that my head stays straight, my spine stays straight, and I stay in my lane and not weave. Talking to her is important too. I need to remind her that she's doing right. So if I say good girl and come on and I just talk to her, uh, it makes it fun, it makes her want to keep doing it. Practicing that nice long free stack. If she'll just keep doing what she's doing and the dog will really actually naturally do a squared up free stack on their own and we just get in the way and mess them up. Uh, I make sure my toes are nice and square, my shoulders are square, my eyes are up. The dog is going to want to stand comfortably and standing square is the most comfortable way for them to stand. They're going to mimic what I'm doing. So my palm of my hand forward means we're to go forward. Uh, if my palm of my hand turns away to the inside corner of the ring, that means we're getting ready to turn and she'll be able to know where I'm going. Uh, she'll get it figured out. She's just a baby. I'm using voice, but I'm also using hand signs. So I want her to know where we're going. So I almost stepped on her there. She needs to be paying attention to my hand. My hand signs will always be telling her what they're, what she's supposed to be doing. From the lineup in the ring, we're then going to be putting our dogs one at a time on the exam table. So I just landed her on the exam table. I set her front first so that while I was placing her down, I already had the front set. So that saves a ton of time. And now I'm just trying to get her back uh, set. So I'm trying to also get her to relax the, her top line so I can get a little more of a stretch and still have that nice a perpendicular uh, back uh, cannon bone to the table. This is where I will start being looked at where 100% the judge is looking at me. Getting off the exam table, putting the dog down. Now I'm trying to straighten her out so that I can get a nice straight down and back. Again, the judge is watching just me. Our down and back is important because the judge is looking at just us. So the judge is looking for straightness. The judge is going to see a, uh, a full-on frontal view of the dog in movement and a rear view of the dog in movement. I'm not too worried about gait on this down and back because of where the judge is standing. If the judge were to have asked us to do a triangle, that would be different. But here, I just want to make sure we stay straight so sh the judge can view the structure and the movement. So I've set up a table that looks like a baiting judge, a judge that will hold bait in their hands. And I want my dog to always want the judge and, and, and know that the judge is always going to have a treat in their hand. So that way my dog will look at the judge, will walk up to the judge, be friendly to the judge. So that little table is my pretend judge. I loaded that table to my pretend judge with bait, her favorite. And I even have a couple little pieces up there so that she'll get used to when we're done going over there and grabbing them. So that way I can always get her focused on that judge. In the training studio, I will always have bait on that table. Uh, the bait bag I keep up there too because I want a visual and I want it to smell. And I want them to always remember that they had been given a treat. So that's about hand height 
uh, of the judge, and that's where I want my dog to focus, and that will be the prettiest vantage for the judge to look at my dog. There's really not a lot of, um, uh, of confirmation that the judge can actually see when they're just looking at the dog going uh, down and back. It's not until the dog is going back to the lineup that the judge is going to see our gait. So I want to even impress the judge when I've finished my down and back and then go back to the lineup, which is where the judge is going to watch my dog in motion and have a one-on-one -on -one and just be able to look exactly at my dog and remember my dog over all the other dogs.